Hello, guys. It's a great pleasure to be here, um, especially on in personal, not online. <laughs> Happily, um, today we will talk about a situation which is, in fact, a consequences of uh, pandemia. But before we start, uh, I would like to introduce us to you because probably you didn't heard about Astro Lab stories. But I hope it will change in a moment. Okay, so uh, we are fresh, let's say, fr fresh new in the studies from Rolsap, uh, the capital of Lower Silesia. And who we are, in fact, uh, Shimon is a writer. She is, uh, he is writing novels, short, uh, short novels. Also, he is writing for video games and board games. And also, um, he is an academic teacher responsible for storytelling and quest writing. Uh, and I'm a video game researcher. Uh, and in fact, I'm also an academic teacher responsible for game design and also video game production. Uh, what is a common element of both of us? We are... Uh, both academic teachers at the University of Lower Silesia in Wroclaw, and we are also co-founders of Astro Lab Stories. Uh, this is quite important to show you the context, what in fact, uh, what in fact we are doing in our, let's say, uh, everyday life. But uh, the problem which we, which we had uh, in our everyday work was that we wanted to give our students a chance to do a project uh, which will involve skills, different types of skills. I mean, connected with design, art, and also all elements connected with uh, project management and, in general, uh, developing methods. But because the fact that we are working at the university and we are are limited somehow by the Polish Department of Education, we have to uh, combine and try to match all our ideas and, in fact, our students' proposals to the, uh, the special educational frame which our uh, Department of Education uh, prepared for us. What does it mean? It means that each action, each activity, which is longer than one semester, has to be connected with scientific uh, areas, like theory of communication, like economy, etc., etc. Uh, and to be honest, uh, in moment of pandemia, we wanted to prepare a long-term training and a kind of internship uh, to learn all things connected with the group communication and working, and somehow project management. But what was the most uh, difficult for us that pandemia blocked our students because they have to resign for uh, resign from living in Wroclaw. They had to return to family home. Sometimes they lost jobs, so they lost uh, a regular income, and also a lot of technical and and problems with communication. So, in fact, in such type of condition, you didn't have a real possibility to study and do a regular internship. So, uh, what we decided? So we decided to make a game. Uh, Last Threshold, which uh, was released in the end of March this year, uh, and at the beginning, very, very beginning, we plan to make a very, very short project. Project about uh, maybe 15, maybe 20 minutes of gameplay because of uh, semester regulation and academic year organization. Um, yeah, but because of the pandemic, it's changed a little bit. I think you all knew, know, know about this, this pandemic problems we, we have. And in somehow we use this situation because it gives us possibility to work harder on this project and make it even bigger and at the end also better. Uh, of course, there was some kind of problem with the communication. Uh, we use Slack, uh, Discord. Uh, I can share you some thoughts about uh, for, uh, students uh, in, this kind, in this kind of situation. Uh, because at the very beginning, 
they were very engaging with it. But later, when the pandemic was going on and on and on, it's gone a little bit low and low. So there will be some, uh, there was some kind of problems uh, with the communication, even with this kind of situation we saw also in the university that someone is, you know, having lessons and also going to the zoo or something like that. Uh, that was the, the main problem, and this is something that I think is totally different from the point of view of people who have workers uh, now on the, on the company, and they are doing their works uh, remotely. But when it comes to the students, this idea is not working so perfectly. So we need to make some kind of decisions. Uh, of course, we start from the brainstorm, uh, brainstorm some kind of ideas. We get the people a lot of possibilities. We don't, you know, uh, we didn't want to give them some topic and told them, okay, we are doing this kind of game. We decided, okay, choose. Choose and then we will discuss it. It turns out this part of the brainstorming, as you can imagine, was very funny for the, for the students. It was engaging, but when it comes to the execution of those projects, there were some kind of problems. Those problems, of course, depends on the levels of those people and also of their own skills. We will go to it a little bit further. We need to implement this development into life cycle, as Adam mentioned uh, before. And we also want to cut this project to some kind of milestones. The other obstacles we have, we have other problems. Uh, we have other projects that we need to, you know, work on. And also, we are teachers, so we need to teach people. And we have this one question, what after game launch? Because as Adam mentioned, we, at the very beginning, want to make very small project, but it goes farther and bigger. And to be honest, one of uh, our solution was, firstly, uh, spread our groups into teams and divide it into sections. And somehow try to manage the sections. Of course, uh, it requires extending the development process time, but uh, happily we have a great pleasure and we could count on support from other teachers, especially Patrick Stelina. Patrick, thank you, man. It was a great pleasure for us and for our students, of course. Um, and uh, something what, which was very important and I think it was one of the uh, one of the very uh, specific elements was that we have this possibility and opportunity to make a concrete game component on uh, our students' projects on particular classes, like for example, video editing, game design, lectures, because uh, we had to, you know, to match the schedule of the product, uh, project into the academic year life cycle. Unfortunately, our educational law, it's not flexible, as I think it should be. Uh, and something which we discovered and something which was, I think, the point of the breakthrough was the moment when uh, we have steam page landing and it changed everything. It changed the attitude of our students because we've noticed that one group started to be a little bit panicked because, you know, now everyone can see it, everyone can say, everyone can judge it, everyone can add it to a wish list or not add it. I don't know what's worse <laughs> for them. Um, but on the other hand, uh, we had also a group of students who were very, very excited, very energetic, and was boosted by this motivation. So uh, this was probably the, break the breakthrough which helped us to overcome the whole obstacles in the critical point. Yeah, but we have also kind, some kind, I am the person, you know, who is talking about the problems, he is talking about the solutions. Uh, this is how it works now. <laughs> so we have some problems with um, the team members. There are some kind of tensions. Some people want to do the thing in one way and the other in a totally different way. We use this uh, idea, idea, concept, iteration, acceptation, and implementation, and it works fine for us. 
because we have a lot of, of a lot of times. We also give the people to the possibility to select the tools that we use. They start from the fungus, but they then programmers decided to go further and work on their own system. Uh, we also want to give those students feedback. And at the very, very beginning, we start of doing it on a team. Team, uh, team meetings, then we give the people feedback about the whole work and what is going wrong and what is going uh, in a good way. But after a few meetings, we decided that it took too long time and it's boring for a lot of people because they don't need those kind of informations. I have also this kind of, you know, uh, uh, experience from my, uh, from my other, other projects that Put, putting people, all people on the meeting when they are discussing some things that are totally not important from my point of, or point of work and it's not helped me any, anyway, it's, it's pointless. It's make frustration and it's not help a lot. So we decided to focus more on small groups, then give those people feedbacks what they are doing wrong, what they are doing right, and also make, of course, some kind of personal feedback because, as you can mention, those people that are now students are a little bit different than we adults. This is Generation Z. And they, in those people um, need meaning in their, in their life. So this game somehow is connected to, to make, make sense. They want to have impact uh, also on it. We'll go to it at the end. In the other way, that's the reason why we decided to do a Lovecraft-related visual novel game. Uh, because the meeting, the meaning was uh, one of the most important part of it. But also, uh, to be honest, we have this conflict uh, in matter of harsh and soft leadership. B because, um, to be honest, if we, if we, we've noticed that if you are too soft, no one will listen. We are talking about people who are uh, in the age of 19, sometimes 20 years old. So it was, especially in the uh, moment of pandemia, uh, it was a very uh, first uh, project for them, for most of them. Also, uh, something which, which was, for me, is always funny because I like dark humor. Uh, if you are too harsh, they, if you are too harsh, they will run away. Uh, and somehow it's also fine to uh, have a balance uh, between how uh, you want to manage the leadership in, in your team. But also, uh, it gives another possibility uh, to you. If you give those people uh, some kind of, of feedback and you also told them that you are doing something right or not right, of course this is controversial because we can imagine that leadership is someone who is should be perfect, but it's the people today have a lot of information, so they don't they know there is no one who is perfect. So if you if you really want to be some mentors of of those people, if you really want to you know uh, give some credits uh, to to the, their works and give them the possibility to make the impact, we also need to lower our ego a, li a little bit and make some kind of jokes, even if you make some kind of mistakes. You know, to be a little bit near to, 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 to those people because it built more bond between the whole team. And also, uh, something which is uh, very, very, very interesting, and probably you know it from your everyday work that uh, making video games uh, always, it's uh, always conflict of egos. Sometimes also uh, the ego of member and also the team leader's ego. We also have, uh, we also had this problem, but in fact, we made the game and we created a great opportunity for our students. And it was a great pleasure to be with you today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions? Because I think we have time. One, yeah. Yeah. So 
I, I'm not sure I like followed everything exactly. So correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. You were making like a project as a whole like year, academic year, and like all students were working on one thing, right? Yes, not all students, but some part of the students. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the whole class because it will be you know too much too much people to to make only one thing. So we choose 14 people to to do it. Then it changed, yeah. Then it changed a little bit because we decided at the at some level of the project that there are too much people who are working on some parts, so it will be e easier and better if we cut it a little bit because it makes the situation that some of those people are not working. Yeah. They just, you know, based on uh, other people's work. So th this, this is why we decided to, to cut it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. And how, um, how did the um, university solve, like, the topic of, rights of the students to their work so because we have this uh, astrolab sorry so yeah. it's the company that probably belongs to you right yes so did, did did they have to like sign um that say they don't have rights to it or how to no uh, because university? no 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 it's uh in the case of uh, all copyrights and all elements uh, it's it's a little bit complicated because uh, when you are doing some project at the university or for example you are doing your diploma project, I don't know, BA or MA, um, the copyright, it's not always belonging to the university, mm -hmm. not always. Uh, but in fact, here uh, we are working also, uh, we ruled a non-governmental organization, uh, and we decided to do a project with our students. So it, in fact, the uh, administrational core of this project is outside the university. But it has, it had, and still all our uh, projects should be uh, matched into the academic year cycle. Because uh, the problem, the biggest problem was that uh, when uh, the pandemic uh, started, uh, our students uh, had got a big problem to find an internship because of beginning of the remote uh, work, because of lack of uh, equipment, etc. So uh, it was a very a uh, big administrational problem, and unfortunately, the Polish uh, educa uh, educational department uh, didn't help us, to be honest. And uh, as always, as always, yeah. But in fact, uh, in our perspective, it was a good solution. Uh, and now we decided to uh, create an indie studio with our students, and now we, we are collaborating with the university. But uh, it's collaboration, not the situation when a university has got any loss to allocate. Yeah. Also, those students we were working or working with uh, sti are still with us now, so we are, we are continued of the co cooperation. Uh, this is uh, now. This is not internship. We give them some kind of you know possibility to get the money when we when we have the game already done.